from Appleton, Wisconsin. This is the Anderson Pens Podcast. Welcome to Anderson Pens Podcast, episode 459 for Thursday, October 6th, 2022. This week we have banter, news, updates, Retro 51 Dragons, a glossy red Lamy All Star, facets from Montegrappa, a contest winner, a new contest, plus a new series from Sailor that is coming soon. Fantastic. Before you get started. Yes. Before you get started. Before you get started. I have heard your joke already, and it is so bad, we have to leave it for the end. So that as soon as you say it, we can just cut. So I'll go first this time. <laughs> okay? Do I have your permission? <laughs> yes, I guess. Which dog breed, Mr. Anderson, comes from New Mexico? Mexico. I, I have no idea. The Alba Corgi. Oh. See, now mine's bad, but yeah, wait. Just yeah, wait for yeah, it. Yeah. Go ahead. So, you know, um, uh, you know when a musician stands on stage in an auditorium, okay. the sound bounces off the walls and, you know, envelops the, the listener. Okay. Yeah, yes, you know how that works. I will yeah. agree with it. Did you know that uh, that doesn't happen for a pigeon? If the pigeon is on the stage? The pigeon's on the stage, yeah. Why? Because acoustics. Told ya. Brian. Yes. I, I don't think you were here last week. <laughs> no, I wasn't. I don't think I was here I think I think we were here, but not at the same time. I don't think you were in the state. No. Yeah. You were in Chicago. I wasn't here. Uh, Lisa and Steph took care of it. Did a great job. Um, glad that you're back. Glad that I'm back. You have not seen our location bumper. I have not. Uh, but we're, you, we're back, you, to, we're back you, to old times. You have seen it in real life, I'm have sure. I? It is the Lawrence University's new Welcome Archway. Oh. Have you seen that? No. Okay. The arch <laughs> and patio at the corner of College and Drew. So it's three blocks? Okay. We'll say yeah, three yeah, blocks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it was unveiled September 6th as part of the university's Welcome Week <laughs> festivities. Members of the class of 2026... <laughs> kicked off what is expected to be part of the welcoming of new first-year students every year. Lawrence University, by the way, is currently celebrating its 175th wow, year. Wow, 175. And they did a nice job on that archway. Did they? Um, I, I, have, I haven't seen it. It's right on the corner. It's an archway that you can walk under. Okay. <laughs> it says Lawrence University, and it the path leads to Success. Main Hall, Main Hall, which is where all the first-year students go... <laughs> Take it away. <laughs> Tomorrow, changing subjects, Friday, <laughs> October goodness. 7th, is my half birthday. Your half birthday. I just thought I'd throw that out there. Okay. In case anybody wants to say happy half birthday. Happy half birthday. Happy, happy half birthday. This Saturday, October 8th, is National Cappuccino Day. Oh, I can get behind that. A, a cappuccino is the perfect drink for a cold morning, a get-together with friends, or just to enjoy while writing in your journal. A cappuccino is traditionally prepared with espresso, hot milk, and steamed milk foam. Little known fact, a cappuccino is my favorite coffee drink when I'm in Paris. When you're in Paris. Yeah, because they know how to do them. Yeah. They, that, that foam is... I'm going to have Justin show everybody a picture of one of the many cappuccinos I have had in Paris. <laughs> and you'll see why it's my favorite. Okay. They know what they're doing. Um, it's not on this list, but I also know that this coming Saturday, October 8th, is filming day... Number one. Filming day number one. Filming day number one for Justin's new short movie. Oh. Yeah. So. Nice. Maybe another award in the future. Do we do, are, are we on call? I'm on call. You're on call? I'm on call. Like as an extra? <laughs> no, no, as, as a gopher. I want to be an extra. I want to be in the back. As a guy to the table. Oh, yeah. It's like at the table. Yeah. You're drinking a cappuccino. Yeah. yeah. This could Paris. work out. This could work out. We're going to film in Paris. Yeah. Fantastic. This coming Monday, October 10th. Indigenous Peoples Day. Indigenous Peoples Day is a holiday in the United States that celebrates and honors Native American peoples and commemorates their histories and cultures. On October 8, 2021, U.S. President Joe Biden became the first U.S. President to formally recognize the holiday by signing a presidential proclamation declaring October 11, 2021 to be the national holiday. Um, so there you go. Awesome. In other news, this Sunday, October 9th, on YouTube, guess what returns? Uh, That's right, Sunday brunch. <laughs> it's menu 18. What are we talking about? 
I have no idea what we're I talking don't either, about because we haven't filmed it yet. But we will. I have a pen though. I got a, I got an awesome pen. I have to an pick awesome up. pen too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it'll tie right into something you're doing on your end. You'll you'll know. Okay, probably. Not. Before we go on, you have two. I have two. Well, they can. Oh, that's an accident because I mean, the, the, yeah, there is yeah. an accident. Well, you, the, the, the odds are better. They can guess either one, or both, or both. Why not both? Um, Double the bragging rights if you get both. I have a little quiz for you. Ooh. Uh, which, if you had to guess, and I would have gotten this wrong because I didn't know the definition, but if you had to guess, which of the 50 states of the United States is the most rural? Rural. Uh, Take a guess. Uh, the most rural? The most rural. Of the 50 of states. Of the 50 states. Inks? No, or just states. The states themselves. States the themselves. Inks can't be rural. North North Dakota. I don't know. Yeah, see, I would have said Alaska because it's so wide open okay, spaces. Yeah. But apparently, you need people living places to be considered rural. To be rural. Okay. Which state of all of them borders exactly only one state? Hint: It's the same. It's the same state. You should know already. Which Alaska? state is the only one? Maine. That has a single Maine. syllable. Maine. I bet you it's Maine. It's Maine. Speaking of Maine, right? <laughs> I have uh, Sailor 50 States, Maine. Um, what do you think? Uh, I think it's brown. <laughs> I was going to say, I was going to say, according to Sailor, this it looks is a, a little soft brown and soothing gray, but I see more of a brownish tone that is not unpleasant. I no, kind of nice. like it's it. It's nice, yeah. Um, uh, in fact, I wrote down here, it's the Herbon Cacao de Brazil without the red in okay. it. Okay, I was going to say, it looks like something, and that's, yeah, yeah. yeah. Without the red in it. I like it. Uh, I have kept it in the pen. Oh, yeah. I like it okay. that much. You're going to have to buy a new pen now. you got to buy another Pelican. No, I'm not using the Pelican currently. I'm oh, using you know. a different one. Oh. Using the Trisby so I can oh. use it. I can go. I can do this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no feathering, of course. No show through. No bleeding. Excellent flow. Cleanup was a very easy two. Too, as are most, most sailor inks are pretty easy. Yes. Yeah. Um, reds, I think. I forget what. Yeah. Reds stick to my mm -hmm. hands. Uh, yeah. Nice little bottle. 20 mil. Uh, the ice cube bottle and the three milliliter uh, samples are available. Um, flew off the shelves the first time. Yeah. Does so, it have stickers in it? Um, that's uh, Ink Studio, I think. Yeah, they've been including stickers have in they? some of the others. Yeah. No, there's no stickers in there. The stickers you, you're talking about, I think. For the, the converter. Ones, for the converter yeah. that come with the Ink Studio. Yeah. Anyway, I like it. I like it a lot. It's nice. Um, it's attractive. It's, it's right up there with it's, Cacao de Brazil. Yeah, it's not black. It's not. No. It's, but it's, it's highly it's legible. Nice. Yep. Yep. What type of fly loves bread? Butterfly. Mr. Anderson. Yes. Literally just walked in the door. Not you, but this next product. <laughs> Yet another good reason to do podcasts on Tuesdays. But today's Thursday. Thursday. It's Thursday. Yeah, it's today's Thursday. Thursday. <laughs> Thursdays. Uh, this is the Retro 51 Big Shot Tornado USPS Dragons. Dragon, yeah. Uh, the Postal Service currently has dragon stamps out, and these are all the dragon stamps. I don't know if this is all of them. I imagine they are. Uh, I'll give that to you and explain that the Retro 51 Big Shot showcases four dragon designs illustrated by artist Don Clark. The Forever Stamp Art has now been turned into a rollerball pen featuring the high-flying, fire-breathing, mythological creatures that have roamed our imaginations for millennia. Each of the colorful dragon stamps, plus the stamp salvage graphic, has been silk-screened around the metal barrel of the larger diameter tornado. The art is protected by a gloss varnish and accentuated, with stealth black trim only to be topped with one more dragon on the finial. Each pen has been numbered on the top top ring next to the USPS logo and packaged in a commemorative tube that doubles as a pen stand or carry case. Grab one of these USPS dragons and feel the inspiration burning with this legendary new design. Just so you know, when I when we're talking like that, he usually shows pictures. So all that stuff you did for the camera. That was just for you. Cutting room floor. That was just uh, for you. You're to make me laugh. Again, it is the tube. Put that in there. Put that in there. It becomes a pen stand on your desk. Uh, Justin and I just noticed that this has a little stamp or a sticker oh, on the a back. Stamp on there. Uh, we're thinking they probably put that on all. Does the that come USPs. off? Can we use that? I didn't want to because someone's going to buy this one, and they're they're all numbered. 
This well, it's one, crossed off. The forever is crossed off, so you can't. You use can't it actually stamp. use it. It's exactly why I was going to buy this pen, so I get a free stamp. Anyway, they are here now, uh, and especially if you like dragons. Yeah, I mean, literally just came in 15 minutes ago. Yeah, just just as we were setting up here, just as we were setting up. I cool. think now we're going to that red box. This here. red box here? Just hold it up. I want to see this red box. It's red. That is a red box. Isn't that nice? It looks like a nice gift. This is lovely. Is it for me? This is new for the holidays. Is it new for the holidays? It is oh, new for the holidays. I'll redo okay, the reading. All right. The Lamy All-Star Fountain Pen Set in glossy red is so fun. Included glossy red aluminum body and cap with the silver metal clip. The contour grip section is contrasting yellow and ensures that the pen is held correctly for the optimal writing experience. It's got that little section there. The gift set comes with not one but two sections, one with a red feed. Actually, it's orange. Uh, and one with a black feed, and both feature a steel nib in fine. Proprietary Lamy cartridge in mango is included, and the Lamy Z28 converter can be purchased separately for use with bottled ink. This is very nice. Plus, did and it comes anything with, about the it, notebook? We said nothing, nothing about, the, about notebook the notebook because the pen is so cool. So it comes with a notebook, too, a Lamy notebook. That is a nice gift set. It's a lovely, it's a lovely uh, set. Why do you think they gave us two sections? They gave two sections because the orange feed can, can stain with darker inks. So if you're oh, using... Okay. A lighter colored ink like uh, the mango that's in it, uh, then you can use the orange section, uh, orange feeded pen, feed. or if you're going to use a, a dark ink or a black ink or something like that, then they have a standard section with, with black on But this is really cool for someone who really likes pens or someone who needs to get into pens. Yes. It's nice. Um, I like it. And I, I, what I want is the notebook. But... I also want this pen because what's special about this pen, Mr. Anderson? It's, what is it's, special? it's glossy red. It's glossy red, it's glossy so red. much so that none of us could <laughs> say definitively if it was actually aluminum. It, it, it was quite a so debate. smooth was... and nice. Hold on to that. Dave, however, came to our rescue. Yeah, because it feels... Said, it feels. why don't you weigh it? So we're going to recreate that. Okay. Not that you can see the scale, but we're going to put, we're going to put, what is this? Okay, that's a, a charcoal safari. This is a safari, so we know this is plastic. It's right on the scale. The scale is not turned on, so we're <laughs> going to start that all over again. On. Hi. <laughs> they can't see it. All right, the scale says for this pen, which is plastic. Wow. What do you read there? That's different than what it weighed before. <laughs> <laughs> but it says 15. 15. It 15. says 15 grams. And then this we yeah. know is an it's aluminum all star. It's an aluminum all star. Ocean blue. Ocean blue, yeah. and so we're putting that on, and we get 22. 22. Okay, so that's the same as it was so before. If this is at 15 or thereabouts, it's plastic. It's plastic. If it's at 22 or thereabouts, it's actually aluminum. What if it's 17? It's, it's just said 11 at first. But now it says it's 22. It's 22, yeah. All right, so it just, it's, it's, there's something it I don't know. It's so nice that it, it doesn't seem like it's aluminum. Yeah, let me see this here. Let's, yeah. It just, it doesn't, right. it's the same weight, but it doesn't, it doesn't. I'm gonna, Feel that way. Be walking out of here with one of these pens. It's neat. This is super cool. Plus, you get the second section, the section nib, the second nib, and this notebook. Yeah. Which you pointed out, oh, it says Lamy on it. Yeah, but it starts. It goes off to the side. It there. starts on the on the. And the it starts side. off to the side. And yeah. That's cute. It's very nice. Nice gift set. Nice. nice box. Uh, and, and are these limited? I think these are these are special edition. When they're we gone, were, they're gone, we right? were actually only allocated a very very small number. Yeah. yeah. Uh, didn't know anything about it until they showed up, and when they're gone, when as far gone, as I know, they're gone. they're gone. But never say never, I guess. It's just, I like that pen. It's nice, it's isn't it? Really good. It's really nice. You could you could sell a hundred of those. You're going to tell us all about this Montegrappa. I am going to tell you all about this Montegrappa Brenta. It's the Brenta. The Brenta and fountain pen and roller ball. And roller ball. Uh, it's the Montegrappa Brenta has a classic flat top design. It features a black resin body and cap with an all over wave design. I love that. It's so cool. Uh, thin stainless steel triple cap bands perfectly accent the sleek look. And the clip supports the classical contour with the Ruzzolino clamp. Did I say that right? Ruzzolino? Who knows? Ruzzolino? Uh, I was, I've been saying Ruzzolino. Do Ruzzolino? you know what a Ruzzolino clamp is? I have no idea what a Ruzzolino clamp is. We don't either, but Justin and I have But it has it one. It is that little roller at the bottom of the clip. That's a, cl a Ruzzolino clamp. That's what they're calling it. Ruzzolino clamp. Okay. Uh, the Mont the Montegrappa Brenta. <laughs> Do it it's not a Brenta. Time. It's not. Do it in Montegrappa time. Brenta. It's available in fountain pen and roller ball. Um, it's a meme. It, <laughs> it fills with standard international cartridges or converter. And uh, as a number six size nib, 
uh, is available in both stainless steel and 14 karat gold nib options. You've got extra fine, fine, medium, broad, 1.1 and 1.5 in steel. 14 karat are available on extra fine, fine, medium, broad, 1.1. And then there are two flex, uh, 14 karat flex options, flex extra fine and flex fine. And uh, the Walter Grappa Brenta Rollerball uses a common rollerball refill uh, available in black or blue. So oh, this I is... I see that extra fine flex. Extra fine that, flex, that, yeah. yeah. Is it, do they do that by taking a little they, off the they, 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 they cut out a little bit on the side. Okay. Yeah, usually. Um, so we don't have the pen. We don't have the pen, here, but we have. Uh, but we certainly. It, it is. The waves on that are very it nice. It looks cool. Very, it looks very super nice. cool. So. Very nice. But available for order. For order. What's a good spot for a taste bud? I forgot. It's on the tip of my tongue. Brian. Yes. As previously mentioned, we were not here yet, uh, last week uh, or yesterday. <laughs> Um, or today, apparently. Do you know that the ladies did a contest? They, uh, they well, they usually do one every week. Yeah, I don't remember what it is. You don't remember? I don't it remember. Was how do you get ink off your hands? What oh, methods do you use? Okay. And I have uh, uh, collected all the stats. You got the data. Most recommended solution, not by a long shot, but the most recommended okay. solution was lava <clears throat> soap, which is what I generally use okay. after doing a hand print. The second most recommended was take a shower. Uh, shampooing your hair usually get, takes care of it. Now, hmm. I have noticed this for years and never said anything about it because I thought that's weird. I must be the only one who is getting rid of ink on their hands by taking a shower, by, by shampooing your hair. But a lot of people mentioned eight. that. Oh. So, well, I wasn't going to say eight, I was just going to say a lot. Well, <laughs> <laughs> so, we, we, we got to have, we got to put a shower in here then. At the yeah, store. Yeah, I just, uh, shampoo your hair and it, and it takes care of it. Uh, I forget who, but one comment was um, that that's also a secret for gardeners that gets the dirt off your hands. Oh, pads. okay. Um, many said, just leave it. Uh, and also many said dish soap. Now, I had never even thought of mm. just using mm -hmm, the dish mm -hmm. soap. Um, uh, other recommendations, there was Amodex. Master's hand soap. Now, I do have a bar of that. Never heard of that. Uh, I, I think it's mostly get paint off your hands if you're a painter, okay. but it also works very well. Uh, ink Zap, which you Love just it. used. Yeah, I just used it. Yep. Uh, dish soap and a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. Mr. Now, Clean Magic Eraser. I never thought of that. Wow. We have, but yeah. that might just work. I'm going to try that. I have some. I have those here. Uh, ammonia, wet ones mm. wipes, hand sanitizer, isopropyl alcohol. Dish soap and the rough side of a small sponge. Hmm. I use a little brush. It's, a, it's really a fingernail brush, but okay. I use it all over. Sand soap. Gojo. Do you know what Gojo is? I do know Gojo. That's usually I see it in auto parts yep. stores. Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. and Orange container? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, WD-40. Okay. I'm going to try that. I have that in at home. I'm going to try that. 100% uh, glycerin soap. Liquid Castile soap and a non-scratch scotch bright pad. Non-scratch scotch bright. Can you Dun. say that 10 times fast? Non-scratch. Non-scratch scotch bright. <laughs> Diluted solution of Dawn, ammonia, and water. Baby oil. Baby oil. We'll get to that. That's the okay. comment. A soak in the hot tub and Rich. Soak Hello, Rich. Hot tub. Rich said carburetor or oh, brake yeah. cleaner, though he no, may have been joking. No, no. The brake cleaner has long been... Known for cleaning your really? hands. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, he wasn't joking. I'm going to read some comments. Uh, Dim Ledger says, I'm supposed to clean the ink off my hands? Uh, you know. Uh, it's optional. We'll, we'll get to that. Uh, ACP said, hello. Hello. Uh, uh, as for ink, I leave it. And BJ Engel said, I always have at least one spot of ink on my hands. There's no way to avoid it. Even if I was wearing gloves, it somehow finds a way on there. So I just embrace it as part of the hobby. Eventually it wears off and more spots appear. Uh, Arabella Holsafel says, another enjoyable episode. Uh, thank you, Lisa, Steph, and Justin. Justin got a mention. Uh, I'm with Lisa. Ignore the ink <clears throat> on fingers, hands until it goes away. Of course, and this is a very important point. Of course, I don't make handprints out of ink like Eric does, though. And I will say, generally, I ignore it. Yeah. I will yeah, wash my hands away. with a little soap and whatever yeah. stays, stays. But when you put the whole of your hand in the ink, you got to do something. You got to do, do something. something yeah. And while you're doing it, you say, I wish it would all come off. So that's how this all came up. 
Um, so I encourage everyone to do handprints and then see if your method works. Lynn Hayes says, I usually use dish soap and a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. Oh, try Stubborn that. inks come off when I wash my hair. So just, uh, Summer Pearls. To get ink off my hands, I wash a sink full of dishes. So using dish, mm. dish soap. We have no oh. dishwasher, and there's always dishes to wash, yeah. and I have no dishwasher. But generally, I'm doing my ink handprint in the sink, around the sink. So, so I wash right all there. the dishes first. To oh, see, yeah. To make sure the sink is empty. <laughs> so I have to do this backwards now. Tim Chi, I don't bother trying to get ink off my hands, wear it like a badge of honor, but I accidentally discovered that WD-40 works well and is non-toxic. Hmm. I have to check in on that. <laughs> uh, Siriani da Silva, run some baby oil or any vegetable oil, except olive, except oil, olive oil, on the offending stain when the stain is dry. Let it dry and then okay. put baby oil on it. Then run your hands under warm water with a bar of ordinary soap to wash off the oily ink stain. Hmm. It's worked for me for all the inks except permanent, but that's because I don't have any. So uh, I have so many new things to try because of this. I think Just, all I have is olive oil. We could try it with olive oil and come back and report. Well, we report that it doesn't work. That it doesn't she work. was right. <laughs> Jesse Davis is the one that says to clean off uh, to clean ink off my hands. I use Gojo. It has been used in auto body shops and mm -hmm. such for decades. Works great and smells good too. Um, Michelle, hi ladies. That must be you. <laughs> I just cleaned my pens yesterday and found by accident that ink removes ink. Similar to when dyeing your hair and you get dye in your skin, just rub a little ink on your hand while washing. Do you find that happens to you when you're dyeing your hair, Mr. Anderson? Uh, well, <laughs> i got to have hair to dye it, so... <laughs> I didn't know... So you use dye to get dye off when you're dyeing your hair, and I've never tried ink to get ink off. I, I, I think that this has got to be a bet. Yeah. Well, I'm going to have to try it. It it work for come me. back tomorrow, it your says, hands are going to be blue. Let me know if you've tried it. <laughs> Love the podcast. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, I usually have a little ink left over after my hand broke, okay. so I'm going to try to using ink to get rid of ink. That would be funny if that actually works. So I have a winner. Okay. The winner Great. of this week's contest is Andrew Wells, whose comment was, to remove ink from my hands, I use sand soap. Sand soap. Sand soap. Okay. Andrew, thank you for participating. You have won a $20 gift certificate credit to your Anderson Pens account. Please write to me, Eric, at AndersonPens.com, and I will take care of that. I have a new contest. Fantastic. What do I got this week? I wanted people to count, oh. and I was going to do percentages and all that, but it was too complicated. So all I really want to know is, do you have a favorite nib size with? Yeah. What is your favorite? Medium. -ish? Medium for you? Yeah, yeah, medium. What's mine? Fine. Fine. I like fine. Yeah. But are all the pens that I own fine nibs? No. No. So my question is, to our audience members, how many pens do you own with nib sizes other than your preferred nib sizes? So if you'd ask me, I have to tell you how many pens I own that aren't fine. And I, I can't play this game. No. You, <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can figure something out. There's an extra credit, though. Okay. Extra credit is... Uh, what percentage of your entire collection is that? So how many pens do you have that aren't medium for you? And what percentage of your collection is that? So yeah, I'm going to have to count my pens, which are not fine. Isn't Steph doing the podcast next week? Yeah, I already told oh, but her. but I'm here. I'm cool. Yeah, it's you and Steph. <laughs> you thought you were going to get out of that. So let us know in the comments. Uh, and uh, you'll be entered to win a random drawing of $20 gift certificate to your Anderson Pens account. Yeah. 70%. Oh, you're just going to make it up off the top of your head. 70% are not Are not a nibs. medium. Wow. I don't think my percentage is that large because I do like fun. No, I'm also considering a Sailor Broad as a medium. You do you. Yes. You do you. <laughs> you do you. <laughs> you do you. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, I have a lot of fine nibs. Extra fine. Fine. Because in the vintage world, sometimes a nib doesn't matter. It, uh, yeah, it rarely matters. It, it, just, it is what it is. For a good question for you is what percent of your of what percentage of your collection Has nibs? will never see ink? Seventy percent. Seventy percent. Do you remember Brian? Uh, just before we started this podcast, the Retro Fifty Ones came in. Yes. So we actually had them here. We did. 
Also, just we today, we got an email about this next thing that yes. is coming soon, which is the Sailor 1911 Ringless Simply Metallic Series. Please tell us all this is, about it. This is pretty super cool. It here. is nice. Justin will show all the pictures. The new 1911 Ringless Simply Metallic pens by Sailor shine like a metal without the weight. The pearly metallic light catching colors of Simply Blue, Simply Red, and Simply Gray all feature impressive black ion plated 21 karat gold nibs that not only look incredible, but write like dreams. As the name suggests, the series by Sailor foregoes the cap ring in order to highlight these new metallic colors for a crisp, fresh look that is sure to turn some heads. Nib sizes available will be fine, medium fine, and medium. I like them. I, they're, they're nice. They look I, nice. I, they, they look, look cool. Nice. That gray is awesome. The blue looks cool. And the red is kind of a... It's not really red. It's, it's kind of a violet, yeah. violety. I think that's my favorite. Yeah, that's neat. Um, it's super but they're all nice. Cool. And it is interesting without the cap ring. It, it looks mm -hmm, much mm -hmm. different. Yeah. Much but, different. So these will all be the, the 1911 large size, the 21 karat. And when are, when are they coming in? Uh, they will be here within about a week. Within, within a week. Within a so week, this yeah. is really soon. So, yeah. I, I can't wait to see them in It'll real be fun. life. Yep. Um, because the pictures make... Them look really nice, but the proof is in the pudding. It's always, when you, always when different. You see it, yeah. when you see it. That but gray, I, their gray looks super cool. I think that's my favorite. The blue's nice, but the gray looks just. I'll, mm. I'll let you know when I see them, which is my favorite. Um, the little note at the bottom of this picture says, "Go to outro on, on the tripod. tripod." There's the All tripod. Right, there we are. So, thanks for joining us. Tune in next time for more talk about pens, ink, and paper. You can check us out on social media as Anderson Pens. I hear there's a store in Chicago. There is a store in Chicago. It's ground floor of the Palmer House Hilton. Open seven days a week. You'll find Lisa there. Does it have a website? Chicago.AndersonPens.com. Like this video, please, and consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Now we're going to talk about the pens in pens Ryan's pocket. In pocket. Uh, first one here uh, is the uh, King of Pen, uh, Sailor King of Pen Pro Gear in Ocean. Where have I seen that recently? Uh, it was probably in my pocket. Huh. Was that the last pen? Of the last this brunch? was this was the last Ocean uh, King of Pen that was available. I grabbed it. Well, is that the pen you had for the last? Probably, brunch? probably, okay. yeah, yeah. And, and then I have a Parker Fifty One uh, Vacuumatic uh, with a luster light cap that you have in your pocket specifically because you had to come out here and prove to me that the nib goes through the collector. The nib goes through the collector. Yes, because I thought it went on yes. top of the feed. Yeah, and so he proved me wrong. So, for those those that are watching, this will be available in a future vintage mailer. Oh, that one? Exactly yes, that one? that one there. Oh. It, that one actually has a matching pencil. You say it's a vacuum? In a box, yeah. Look at that. Oh, yeah, see, I, I have uh, not the vacuum mag. I have yeah, the, the aerometric. The aerometric, yeah, which is the only way you can get a cocoa, the color cocoa. Yes. So, so get a that's why I have that one. And I love it. Um, there you go. But that, that's do, perfect for you. I, I Your do like, trim. I do like it's a uh, fine vac nib. Vacuumatics. It's a fine nib. It's got that clip that you like. Yeah, without the little this diamond. Is, this on is it. perfect for you. That is. That is. So I'll take the the Lamy and this. <laughs> I should have uh, words of wisdom, shouldn't I? Should. Oh, I do. Yes. Um, according to the box of macaroni and cheese, I am a family of four. Bye. <laughs>